Good morning. This is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. A Wagner woman will remain behind bars after her request for parole was denied. In 2013, Lori Knoyer was sentenced to 22 years in prison on several drug charges and for not reporting the death of two-year-old Riley Lovell in a timely manner. In 2020, she was granted parole, but just two years later, she was back behind bars on more drug charges and an aggravated assault charge. Knoyer was denied parole this time with one board member citing that the last time she was released, it didn't go well. Rapid City Police are investigating the unattended death of a woman found in the southern part of the city. Authorities say they were called to the 1400 block of Winfield Street just after 7 o'clock Wednesday morning. Someone stepped into a fenced-in area and found the woman lying in the grass. After looking at cameras in the area, police learned that the woman had entered the fenced-in area Tuesday evening. An autopsy is scheduled for later this week. Officials are looking for more video from the neighborhood. If you have any, you're asked to call Rapid City Police. One truck driver is dead and another injured after a crash east of Beersford Tuesday afternoon. The highway patrol says a semi-truck and trailer swerved to avoid a pickup pulling off into a private driveway. It crossed into the other lane where it hit another semi. Troopers say the driver of the swerving semi wasn't wearing a seatbelt and was thrown. He died on the scene. The second semi-driver has serious but non-life-threatening injuries. One of the trucks was hauling ethanol and a hazardous materials team had to be called out. That section of highway was closed for six hours. Police are seeing an increase in catalytic converter thefts in Sioux Falls. So far, there have been 20 reports of vandalism and theft. The most recent happened in a parking lot of the Sioux Falls Regional Airport. Areas where we see more thefts are places where you're going to have a vehicle that's parked, maybe for an extended amount of time. Clemens says as the weather gets warmer, they expect the number of thefts to rise. Now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Scott Munt. Good morning, Scott. All right, good morning, everybody. We are looking at a cold start to the day. Temperatures in eastern Cabo Land are in the single digits above and below zero. It's that or the lower teens. We'll have some sunshine today across southeastern Cabo Land, but due to a system just off to our southeast, I think the clouds will be a little thicker in the southeast as compared to a better chance for sunshine in western, central, and northern South Dakota, where temperatures will hit the 30s for central and western Cabo Land. Teens and 20s across the east. Warmer numbers do arrive this weekend. More details on your forecast with Brian coming up. Thank you, Scott. A bill that's advanced in the South Dakota legislature aims to set up mandatory sentences that can't be suspended for certain DUI offenses. The House Judiciary Committee passed HB 1170 by an 8 to 5 vote. It deals with fourth or four or more DUI offenses in a certain period of time. Republican Representative Chris Carr, the prime sponsor of HB 1170, says the motivation for the bill is to protect society. This comes after a Sioux Falls man was arrested for his 10th DUI on Monday. Police say 40-year-old David Rocky Mountain sideswiped a police car and led police on a 35-mile-an-hour chase on the east side of the city. Meanwhile, South Dakota students will not be allowed to use public funding for private K-12 schools. HB 1234 would have created a voucher program. The sponsor of the bill said that this would help students and families access schools that are better aligned with the child's needs. Opponents say a voucher program would erode funding for public schools. The bill was killed by a vote of 11-3. A Mitchell man was awarded the Purple Heart almost a dozen years after he survived a mortar attack in Afghanistan. Marcus, Ro Marcus Roethlisberger served seven years in the Army. During Operation Enduring Freedom, he was guarding a helicopter landing zone when his position was hit. Roethlisberger thought he was okay, but it turns out he had suffered a traumatic brain injury. Congressman Dusty Johnson and his staff worked to get Roethlisberger the Purple Heart. When a mortar round hit his uh, watchtower and caused him injuries, uh, that, that, was, uh, that was a tough day for Marcus, and there have been a lot of tough days since. And that's why we give out the Purple Heart. It is an acknowledgment of the fact that all too often, this service comes with sacrifice. Roethlisberger says he's humbled and grateful to receive the medal. 
The Sioux Falls Stampede will hit the ice this weekend to raise awareness about an important topic. On Sunday, the herd will be teaming up with Fight Like a Ninja, an organization that raises awareness about mental health and suicide prevention. It was started by Angela Drake, whose daughter Brittany took her own life in 2016. I think it's really important, um, and this is an event that we're hoping to, to grow in future years as well. I think, um, you know, especially today, th there's been more awareness of it, and um, mental health is, uh, is, is obviously something important to talk about and difficult to talk about. The game starts at 4 o'clock Sunday afternoon. You will be able to bid on the special warm-up jerseys, and money from each ticket sold will be donated to the organization. The Premier Playhouse in Sioux Falls is set to unveil a double feature of plays and each is locally written and performed. The Premier Premieres hits the stage today at the Washington Pavilion. The Twin Bill features the theater at night and broadly speaking and other BS. The managing artistic director welcomes the challenge of working on an original play. It's exciting to see how the piece evolves. It also means there is a lot of mystery because a lot of the collaborative conversations among the team and in the rehearsal room are about what if, and whenever you ask what if, things change, right? So um, the production's constantly evolving. The premiere premieres, yeah. opens tonight, and runs through Sunday. We've posted a link with showtimes right. under this story on Kelloland.com. Well, that is a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right, weather as we set up the weekend forecast. First of all, we're going to look at the big picture, which is milder air coming back from the northwest. This will be Pacific air, which is a good recipe mid-February to get those temperatures back in alignment to where they were here just a few days ago. Um, now, the next thing we're going to watch next week, probably looking at this uh, air mass kind of uh, at least at this point shifting eastward, the milder air, if you will, to the east. And then here comes the cold, at least the first installment of that. Now, for the middle to end part of February, we're normally going to be in the mid 30s now, Sioux Falls. So when we start talking about high temperatures in the teens, Yes, that's certainly well below average. Some of these numbers would even be colder than that, but uh, those are things that will have to play out in the timeline as we go into next week. Obviously, we'll have more homework to do on that subject. Today, mid and upper 30s, Rapid City. I think Pierre will be in the low 30s as well. We'll see teens from Sioux Falls to Aberdeen. Now, tonight, some single digits are going to pop up again. The wind will start to increase, by the way. The far northeast, I would be especially... Uh, keyed in on that around Summit, uh, extending down on the Buffalo Ridge in southwest Minnesota. There could be some blowing snow, especially those of you in the far northeast tip of South Dakota that picked up that snow the other day. I think that that could blow around with that south-southwest wind tomorrow morning. Otherwise, the afternoon is looking pretty good in Phillip and in Rapid City well into the 50s. And we'll keep some of that mild air going again into the weekend. Next chance of snow, end of the seven-day forecast. Start watching things here as uh, we get into the middle part of next week. It all depends on how fast this cold air descends, and then that will be the prodding mechanism that will start to brew up some snow coming out of the Rockies. A little early to get specific on that, but we're getting better consensus now that something is going to come through here next week. So more on that in the days ahead. Today's high, 22 Mitchell, 21. Our temperature in Huron, those 30s to the west. Low tonight around zero, Worthington, two below in Marshall. And then those 30s for the weekend. I think there's even an opportunity to be warmer than those numbers suggest for Saturday and Sunday in Sioux Falls. We've had a uh, tendency to do that on these forecasts lately. We'll see some model output and then yeah, we're able to even best that by at least a couple of degrees. Aberdeen would be similar, low to mid-30s, at least on Saturday and Sunday. Monday, we can also maybe squeeze out. We can delay that maybe a day on the, the cold air, but it is going to come in here at some point in the middle of next week, and at least down in the teens. Pier and Rapid will also see quite an abrupt change on the weather. No more 40s and 50s. We're going to set that aside and replace that air with highs in the teens and 20s. And yes, there will be snow working back into the Black Hills next week. Skiers delight. More coverage online at kettleland.com.